Welcome back to the RPG Maker MV Tutorial Series Level 2. We've populated our map, but our options are fairly limited. So how can we improve that? Well, let's take a look at the character generator. Let's make a game. Alright, so here we are back in RPG Maker MV, and we're in the town. So if you recall, obviously we have our fishing village that we've pre-populated already, uh, and in the town We've now applied the same skills that we used in previous episodes just to add an inn, an item shop, we've found a weapon shop, an armor shop, a house, and we've also added an, an abandoned house. So we just used some of our mapping skills, um, things like cracks and dirt, uh, to make this abandoned looking house. We'll use that later on. And we've populated it with some NPCs. Now most of these NPCs just exactly the same as in the fishing village. They just say I'm a random villager. And we have the greeter who really just says the same thing as in the fishing village for now. So, um, because her grandmother also runs the inn in town we wanted to set up a grandma running the inn, and we wanted to look for an image. Let's go to the text now. That's the grandma that we used for the fishing village. And let's have a look around. There's really no one else who could be a grandmother other than perhaps this one. It's pretty limited in our options. So what can we do about that? Well, luckily, RPG Maker comes with its own inbuilt character generator. So let's take a look at that now. Click character generator. And here you have male, female, and kid options. Just be aware before you start that the kid options are very limited uh, and um, would require a fairly significant amount of uh, adjustment before you can really do much with them. You can customize the whole generator and you will see that the generator includes things that are not really appropriate for a lot of games like for example, um, I, I don't think I would ever use something like this or this or really a lot of them, in fact. Um, and uh, this, this cannot be fixed, but we'll look at that in future levels. So for now you can see if you click randomize, you get a random character. And some of them look okay. Uh, you can click on the female character, which is what we're after in this case, and you click randomize. Until you find something that looks kind of close to what it is that you're after. And then after that you can actually adjust that character a little bit more so that it fits the look and feel of what it is that you're going for. So we might start with this lady, we'll make her look a little bit older, um, we could change her front hair. Notice that um, you have different options on the side here, now these are face, hair, front hair, rear hair, ears, eyes, eyebrows, nose, mouth, facial mark, beast ears, uh, most of them are fairly self-explanatory but some of them are not as, um, so this gives you ears that come up, uh, tail, wing, clothing, cloak, accessory 1, accessory 2, uh, and glasses. Okay. The Another thing that's important to note is that the skin color, for example, will flow through to um, things like nose and mouth, they all share the same color, and hair has uh, front hair, will flow through to say eyebrows which also shares the same hair color uh, and rear hair on the other hand has a, a different um, sub color which affects the color of uh, for example it, it, there's some little bits that you can't quite see on here because we've got a, an accessory there um, but if you go to rear hair you can see that uh, that's the hair color and then you might have for example the sub color which in this case we can't really see what it's doing to anything. If we click on this one we can see that the subcolor changes the color of the ribbon there. Once again it's quite easy to miss but there's actually a little scroll wheel here so you can scroll up and uh, that can get you to some kind of a hairstyle that's a little bit more appropriate for what it is that you're after. So we'll just tinker with this until we find something that works for us and we'll cut this bit out. Okay, now clothing has probably the, the most options. Uh, once again, you can scroll down here and you can see that there's uh, three different sub-colors under the main color. So we found something that looks a little bit like a dress. 
Um, so here we are. Uh, we have a kind of granny-ish looking person. It's a bit hard to get a granny look, but uh, we'll just we'll just stick with this for now. Now the first thing that you'll want to do is to save your settings. So that's so you don't lose it. So open, click Save Settings. Now set up a new folder. Call it something like Characters. Doesn't matter what you call it. It's up to you. And you might want to save your first character as 01. Save that. And this means that uh, if you accidentally do something like closing this window, what you'll find is that if you hit Character Generator again, you've lost all your progress. Unless you are smart enough to save it. So now you can load that up and wait a minute, where's our granny gone? Ah, that's because we're on the males tab and it saved the male and the female. Okay, so there we are. There we're back with our granny now. Now how do we use these characters in our game? Well, if you recall, the only things that we've really used were the face image and we had our character standing there and perhaps walking around in our village. So we need those items. So the first thing we want to do is export the face image. So we just click face image, click export, and it will come up with the image faces folder. It goes there automatically. And we might just call this once again 01. Save that and close. Now the next thing that we need for a basic character is the walk character. So we'll click walk character, export, and we'll just call that 01. Save it, close, and close. And now we just need to set up our character. So let's go to the in. We'll double click here. And we'll press space to edit this image. Double click on the face. And now we can see that we have a 0, 1 character. Click OK. Click OK. We double click here. And we can look for 0, 1. And there is our new character. Click OK. Click OK. Let's right click here, set starting position, player, and we'll test out our new granny. So off we go, test our game. We can see she's right there, and there's a new image. And that's all it takes to set up a new NPC. Now you might have noticed something when we went to select the image. If we click on here, and we click on face, we can see that the other uh, actor um, sheets have eight but ours only has one, and the rest are blank. Why would that be? Okay, well, let's have a look at the walk image. We can see the same thing. There's actually enough space for eight characters on each of these. So how do we fix that up and give ourselves some more characters? Well, we're back. We go back to the character generator. So we open up the character generator once more. We load up our granny, and there's our female NPC. Now, because we're using uh, the, we have two characters, the male and the female, on the same um, character save, what we can do is we may as well use this one and we'll turn this into an NPC as well and we'll add that to the same character sheet. And with the magic of video editing, here's our new character. We're going to save settings, save it under zero 01, and then that way if we open up our character generator again, we load settings, Here's our male and here's our uh, and our female. You have to click on load and we've lost it because we just overwrote that character file. So we've kind of rebuilt our granny but uh, that is a good reminder that when you do go to save your dual character make sure that the male and female are both set up and if you do that then when you click character generator uh, you'll notice that these are just the defaults, hit load settings, open, and there's our male and there's our female. Okay, fantastic. So how do we add these onto the existing character sheet? Well, we can, can, we can export the face image. Now if I click here, you'll see that the face image is in the same spot, but I can move that down here. I can click import, and I'm actually having an issue uh, with my RPG Maker for some reason, it's not showing previews. Um, one thing that I found that it can fix this is just to simply go to a folder, open that up, and then the preview is there. Uh, hopefully it doesn't happen to anyone else, but if it does happen to you, that's one quick fix. 
uh, in case you missed it, that's the the my project image faces folder, which is where I'm loading the image the faces from. Uh, and now we click import, and I can see the preview. I've loaded up zero one, open that up, and now I've got my two faces. I can hit export, go to zero one, save that, and now if I go to zero one, I can now see that they're both there. And the same thing applies for the walk character, so I can click walk character, I can click that down there, uh, I click import, I look for zero one. I've got the same deal here, I'm not sure why that's happening, but if I go to image, characters, so project files, image, characters, and I open that in Explorer for some reason, that will then show me the preview. Now if I open that, I can see that that's my granny character, uh, my male character is here, I click export, I export to zero one, and now if you have a look at the preview you can see there are now the two characters there. So how would we apply that in our game? Well let's have a look, so let's find uh, one of our characters over here, and we can replace this gentleman with our new zero one male face and a new zero one male walk. And if I come here to test this out, we're gonna have a look at what that looks like. So we'll go save changes. And we can see here's our new character and there's our new face. So we're back in the character generator. We've got two more male and a uh, male and a female. I'm going to save that. Might call this one zero one B. Save. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to export the face image by importing the existing one, and then export over the top. And then I'm going to export the walk by importing the existing one and exporting over the top and we'll go through and do that uh, for the rest of the blank spaces. Okay, so at the end of this process we've now got four files, 01A, B, C and D. Uh, if I load up D, it's got the male and the female version, so each of those has a male and female uh, character, so that's two characters per save file. Uh, on the face image, if I load up the face images, you can see 01 now has eight faces, and that's 01A, 01B, 01C, 01D, and the walk character also has 01. 01A, 01B, 01C, 01D, and that's a uh, male and female, male and female, or well, female and male, female male, etc. So n now we have eight brand new NPC characters that we can use. So back in the village, I can now click on my text, I can change the image to my new faces, and I can set up 01, my new NPCs. So I can go through and do that across the whole village. One thing to note is if you did set up a, an NPC with multiple conversation levels, you need to actually make sure that you fix all of those. So if I look here, uh, then uh, she'll ask, for example, what's your name? I need to fix this one and all of the other parts where she actually talks to us. So we'll go through and do that now before we test it. So now we hit play. We'll go test out our game real quick. Here's Molly. Missed one. Whoops. We can see everywhere that we've updated it. We can see the new face. And here's our brand new random villager. And we've lost one over here. There they've gone. They're up here. Okay, there's another random grid in here. Yeah. 
as a quick little bonus, uh, you may have noticed that our characters had some random uh, comments there. Under database common events, I've set up an NPC chatter variable. Simply um, in the first line there, we've set a control variable and we've created a new variable called random number. We set it to a random number between 1 and 100. If random number is greater than 75, then text lovely, lovely weather isn't it? Else, if random number is greater than 50, I heard Granny Smith is looking for someone to help her pick apples. If random number is greater than or equal to 25, I wonder if those adventures ever made it back from the Lost Forest. Else, just another random comment. You can put in as many options as you like in here, and you can create some random conversation for your NPCs, just to give them a little bit of flavor without having to do too much. How do you call that? You would click on your NPC, and here it says, first text is um, simply the I'm a random villager with the face, so that we can see that there, and then you do common event, and you choose the NPC chatter common event. So as you may have noticed, uh, this process is a little bit buggy at times, but it, uh, if you follow it through relatively carefully, you can create your own custom characters. One thing that's really important is if you do change the name of your files at any time, you'll end up with this error, and that's the file, name of the, f the image files that you were using, uh, that the game is referencing. Now, you can see here that all of my NPCs have all gone blank, and that's because the image files that they were referencing uh, had a name change, and so they no longer apply. So now I need to click here, and I need to change this one. And now he's back again. Now if I go through and fix all of those up, we should find that this now works. So we'll just do that now. And so we've gone through and we've fixed up all of the NPCs. Now if I hit play, I can now go in and out of my in. So that brings us to the end of the introduction to the character generator. In the next episode, we'll look at how to make um, some custom characters for your party uh, or for your player. See you in the next one. That's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons as they do help with the algorithm. Now it's your turn to go make a game. See you in the next one.